right, everyone, and welcome back to the channel, or welcome if you're new here. I'm Christina, a.k.a. That Variety Nerd, and today we're gathered here for night one of the two-night WWE draft here on our Friday Night Smackdown reaction. So they have part of the roster up for grabs tonight and part of the roster up for grabs on Monday night, and they've got select NXT superstars that we don't know who they are just yet until, well, they get drafted on either show. But, yeah, tonight we have the big rematch between Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn versus the Usos for the tag titles. So that's all happening. Uh, and the draft. I think those are the main plot points for this week. And because of the draft and having a little bit of time off, uh, we're going to see where the chips fall in terms of where everybody lands and that sort of thing. What show is going to be more interesting to watch? And we'll sort of revisit doing reactions just in general. It could be a thing where we alternate weeks. Uh, it could be we switch over to Monday Night Raw. Or it could be that we continue onward and upward on the SmackDown reactions. I'm going to let y'all vote on the community poll just to get an idea of, as to, like, you know where we should watch and that sort of thing and we might put out another poll on Tuesday or even late Monday into Tuesday somewhere around there once all the draft picks are revealed and that sort of thing because you know why not I mean it's look it'll be Monday night versus Friday nights during the summertime I think you know it could go either way uh, but yeah, it'll be a busy summer around here no matter what happens. I'm working on getting my driver's license finally and that sort of thing. So there's that. But either way around, but either way around, grab your snacks, grab your choice of beverage, get comfy and cozy. And let's get to it, people. Oh boy, Trips is coming out here. Okay, it looks like he might be here to explain the draft rules potentially. I mean, there's a little podium there. Oh, cool, the little Tron's on the little screen on the little, like, podium thing. Yeah, you're definitely a stickler for the rules, Trips. I'm I'm ready for this. I'm excited. I love the draft. I don't care what anybody has to say. I wonder who the first pick's gonna be. I had a feeling this was gonna happen. I know the Usos are up on Monday, but I just... I had a feeling, people. I had a feeling. I'm bummed out, but not surprised, because I was low-key hoping that we would get the nice, shiny new title for SmackDown, but Raw needs it more than anybody at this point. But, but, but Raw needs it more. So then wait, like, then the mid-card title's gonna essentially be the world title, because Roman's not here all the time. Over on SmackDown, anyway. Okay! So Cody's staying on Raw. Okay. SmackDown's getting Bianca! Oh no, they're gonna do this title changeover with Rhea and Bianca then, right? Well, I mean, Bianca needed a change of scenery, I think. I kind of wanted Becky to go to SmackDown. You know, it was a change of scenery. Okay, so we have Cody and Becky. No changes really over on that end of things. But Bianca going to SmackDown, I'm fine with that. I didn't expect it, and I'm here for it. All right, so the first round is over with. Overall, not really surprised, except for Bianca, which I find quite interesting. How are they going to work out the women's title situation there? Is it going to be one of those, like, swap the title type things like they did with Charlotte and Becky a while back? I don't know, but we're going to have to see what unfolds. But, eh, we'll see what happens throughout the rest of the evening. Hey, uh, Usos, y'all didn't get, uh, the draft pick with Rowan and Solo. Y'all are going separately on Monday night, so I would shush your faces about Roman right about now. As soon as you said that you were going to dedicate this match to Roman, like, that's when I just sort of knew that Kevin and Sammy were probably going to retain these titles. Well, speaking of which, <laughs> there goes Kevin. <laughs> He's ghosted the Usos at this point. He's mad. He ghosted. <laughs> He ghosted y'all. Weren't we just saying that, Sammy? I still think that Jay's gonna turn his back on Roman at some point, and that's how Roman's losing the title. It's not gonna be Jay taking the title for Roman. I'm just throwing that out there. Kevin's all of us. I can't take this anymore. <laughs> y'all, I don't know if the segment with the Usos and Kevin and Sammy was necessary, but like, I kind of get it because it kind of establishes more tension with the bloodline and why the Usos weren't necessarily picked with Roman and Solo and Paul. I say just let Roman, Solo, and Paul just do their own thing at this point. I'm not mad at this match. I, I can't be mad at this match. I'm here for it. Oh, look at that! LA Knight's got the whole, like, fancy, like, graphic things on the screen. Why are my hands going everywhere? <laughs> I'm calling it now. Like, I think he might win Money in the Bank this year. I know a lot of people were kind of just, like, making whispers about it, too, on the Twitter machine. Yeah, where is Ridge, anyway? He's not out there with them. And we're supposed to cheer for them after that? I love the crowd side that says Raw is better. It's like, sir, you're at SmackDown. Why are you at SmackDown if you think Raw is better? Like, what? 
I sense that they're going to split up the Brawling Brute somehow, mainly because it's just Seamus and Butch. Why do we have a scrolly thing in the lower third when there's only like four draft picks? Oh! Okay, well that's when we had to get somebody out of the ropes right there and utilizing the five count in the ropes and all that. That gets a clap for creativity. Alrighty, we're back from the commercials that make absolutely no freaking sense. Back into the match with Butch in control right here. He's stepping on LA Knight's fingers. Alright, we're at the top turnbuckle in the corner. Oh no, the fingers. Oh no, oh no. Oh, he got some air on that suplex off the top right there. Just just for the air right there. I think that gets an applause. The claps. It, look, it does not take much to entertain me. It really doesn't. I just want a cohesive little story and a good match. Y'all are hearing the LA Knight chants at home, right? We're, we're all hearing the same thing. I think that was the second time Butch got close to a DQ, right? Because remember early on in the match when he had him in the middle rope and that middle rope move was kind of cool? He finally won a match. Jesus. I know that he beat Rey Mysterio the one week, but he beat Butch clean. <sighs> okay, so we'll find out the fate of Butch and LA Knight on Monday night, and we're back with more bloodline drama in the backstage area. But overall, this was a good little starting matchup, and yeah, I can't complain. This was a good little match, so it gets a thumbs up for me. Actually, no, you know what? This gets a two thumbs up, just because LA Knight won. All right, well, we have RVD and Michael Hayes to make the picks for Raw and SmackDown, respectively. Okay, so the Street Profits are going to SmackDown. That makes sense. I wish that we had general managers. Oh, Imperium's going over to Monday Night Raw. Oh, please give us Cody and Gunther. Give us a proper match. Run it back, please. Oh, SmackDown's got Edge? Okay, well, Matt Riddle just got drafted to Raw. It's always a good day when we get to react to our favorite makeshift tag team. <laughs> I'll be so mad if they split up Braun and Ricochet. I don't care. <laughs> split them up eventually, but for right now, I enjoy watching them. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was a whole situation from last week when Braun just chucked Ricochet, like, halfway across the ring or whatever. Oh, boy. Oh, he did... Okay. Braun just chucked Ricochet over the top rope now. They practiced. I like how they justified it. It's like, oh yeah, we actually put in the work this week. <laughs> Keep going, makeshift tag team. <laughs> All right, so we're back from the commercial break, and we have a triple threat match type of situation type deal in here. With Cruz del Toro, Ricochet, and Angelo Dawkins. I, I, I'm, wait, are you supposed to have three people in one of these matches? Or, I don't know, I've just... Yeah, going face first into the turnbuckle, that doesn't sound fun at all. Oh my god, okay, well, he just took out the Street Profits there. Why do we have this little scrolly thing at the bottom of the screen? There's not that many picks that we've been through so far. Alright, here we go, Braun's doing one of our favorite things, running around the ring. <laughs> oh, look out, Braun. Look at you, Angelo Dawkins. Oh, there goes Ricochet now. Yeah, I wouldn't try to one-up Ricochet when it comes to the high-flying stuff. Not at all. Oh, yeah, that's it. Street Profits have it. So wait, we're, I, I get JBL being a SmackDown pick, but why is Teddy Long on Raw giving the Raw pick? Like, when I think Teddy Long, I think of his time as SmackDown general manager. You couldn't have had Teddy Long, like, a little later in the night on SmackDown? Bob! Bob's going to SmackDown again. See, SmackDown's getting a full-blown reshuffle for the most part, although it's mostly Raw people just going over to SmackDown at this point. <laughs> Look at you, Bob. I was low-key hoping he was going to stay on Raw and get the title, but... Here we are, y'all. Here we are. All right, Drew's going to Monday Night Raw. So are we just swapping the rosters around? Like, are we literally just switching the SmackDown roster to the Raw roster, then the Raw roster to the SmackDown roster? Oh, man. Okay, we, we've, got, we've got the OC on SmackDown now. Okay. I really hope that means that we get AJ Styles back soon. Hopefully he's good to go soon. Wow, The Miz actually stayed on Monday Night Raw. I'm actually surprised at that, because he's usually the one person that for sure, like, switches brands all the time with these things. We need some people to kind of stay put on SmackDown now, because I'm getting a little concerned. Because it just seems like to me that Raw has a number of picks staying put, but, like, a lot of people are more, like, going over to SmackDown. So I'm just, I'm wondering about this. Are we going to have really anybody that stays put over on SmackDown outside of Roman and Solo and Paul? I've got no idea. The, the backlash reaction is also probably going to be the birthday reaction. The birthday backlash reaction! <laughs> Look, my birthday's on the 7th and this show is on the 6th. That makes sense to me, y'all. It makes sense to me. 
What what's with Chelsea Green's green bedazzled bucket hat? Oh, but oh, ho, 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 ho. I I love Zelina's gear. Would that mean if Zelina wins, that she would technically be the Raw Women's Champion? Like, how is this Women's Championship situation gonna work? Because both shows need championships, unless if they're unifying those. I don't know. I'm confused. <laughs> I'm confusing myself at this point. All right, well, Zelina Vega won the match. Not much to really write home about, other than Chelsea's bedazzled green bucket hat, and Zelina won the match. But overall, match was all right. Nothing to really write home about, but it was at least serviceable, so there is that. All right, we got the OC out here. I don't know how we would get to it, but can we please get an AJ and Roman match? Because that'd be great. And it's great just seeing AJ Styles back, and I'm glad that he's back after the injury and everything. All right, well, we got the Viking Raiders in Valhalla now, interrupting AJ before he could even talk. AJ's like, I'm going to let you all just, like, fight amongst yourselves. <laughs> But hey, I mean, that just shows that he believes in his group. Strong statement right there. It always seems like AJ Styles tends to do better, like, over on SmackDown, from what I've noticed. So I'm just glad that he's back over on SmackDown now. When do we get a new draft pick round? Oh, there we go. Alrighty, so we've got Road Dog and Shawn Michaels playing the general managers, when we really need actual general managers at this point, here in the fourth round of the draft. Even as Shawn Michaels is technically the authority figure of NXT, but who's keeping track? Wait, wait, wait. Okay, damage control is going over to SmackDown. That's fine. Oh, God, Bailey and Michael Cole are on the same show? Oh, this is going to be great. Ooh, Shinsuke's going over to Monday Night Raw. Has Shinsuke ever been on Monday Night Raw? I don't think so. I'm down. Wait, the NXT Women's Tag Champions, Alba Fire, and Isla Dawn are showing up on SmackDown now. Oh, this is great. Oh, look at the women's division taking shape over here. I'm so happy for them. But then what happens- wait, what happens to their tag team titles then? <laughs> I'm worried about all these titles all of a sudden. Okay, the NXT Women's Champion Indy Hartwell is going to Monday Night Raw. I'm so happy for Indy. We finally have Indy Wrestling on, on the main roster now. This is lovely. What's gonna happen with all these NXT titles now? I got a lot of questions. God, how long did Kevin and Sammy wait between, like, the entrance and the commercials and all the talking and stuff? I'm sick of waiting too, Kevin. I'm sick of waiting too. Like I said a couple weeks ago on our reaction, uh, I think the next major plot point is this match. And I think we got that hinted at earlier when Paul Hammond handed Solo the tape. That kind of implies that Solo is going to finish the job and take care of the Usos for Roman potentially. And that's why Roman's ghosting them. He can't like face up, he can't face the Usos himself. Or maybe he just doesn't want to. Maybe he just can't be bothered. I can't blame him. That's why he's got Solo. He's the enforcer. He understands his assignment every week. The Usos are going to Monday Night Raw, aren't they? Oh, the Usos are right out of the gate. Oh, no. Oh, 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 oh. Yep, Kevin didn't get the stunner in there. Y'all, I'm kind of spent. Like, I mean, I think it's because of a mixture of the commercials and just like how disjointed this show has kind of felt tonight. But the Usos are in control. Two minutes into the match, at most, before we go to another commercial. Alrighty, we're back from the commercial break, and the Usos are in firm control as Kevin Owens is kind of like in the corner, the Usos' is corner, and they're going after his leg. Sammy's like, tag me in, I'm ready to go! I still feel like they really should have just waited this match out a little bit. Like, I get why in terms of the story, but then it's like, what did Kevin and Sammy have next? Alright, here comes Sammy. Well, there goes Sammy over the top rope right there. Alright, we got a sunset flip power bomb. And a kick out from Jay right there. We just got back from a commercial, though. What are we doing? <laughs> How many commercial breaks have we had, Fox? What are we doing? We're ten minutes left in the episode, Fox. What are we doing? What are we doing here? All right, so somehow Kevin Owens is back in control of the tag team matchup. As he just did the running senton thing into the corner. Oh no, we're at the top turnbuckle now. I wish I could provide more of an insightful commentary or whatever to this match, but I'm more nervous about what's going to happen after the match. And two, we've had all these commercials just ruining the flow of the match here, and I'm just... I'm disappointed. Oh, we got a phone call. We got a phone call from the tribal chief. We got Paul and Solo in the corner. Oh, I'm so nervous, y'all. It could be a swerve and Solo ends up helping the Usos get the titles back, or... It could be a swerve to where Solo 
takes out the Usos himself. Wasn't Jay the one that was always against Sammy joining the bloodline, though? Like, he was the last one to jump on the Sammy train, joining the bloodline and all that. All right, Kevin Owens has the stunner. Into the cover, into the cover, into the cover. Ooh, that was close. Oh, there goes Solo! Come on, Solo! I'm rooting so hard for Solo this year. I don't care. Okay, well, Riddle just went after Solo. Where's Sammy at? All right, we got a kick out. But tonight was Solo's night, or is that going to be on Monday night? I don't know. Look, they said that the draft picks don't go into effect until May 8th, okay? Like, it's fair game for Solo to do whatever still. They're, they're trying to win the tag titles, not just to... What? <laughs> so the motivation for the Usos to win the tag titles is to make Roman happy. Oh, boy. Where's Sammy at? We haven't seen Sammy in a while now. It, it's like a two-on-one match at this point. Okay, well, I see Sammy right there. Go get him, Sammy! Go get him, Sammy! That's it. That's it, y'all. That's it. All right. Kevin and Sammy retain. Now, the question is, where do they land on the uh, roster? You know what I mean? Like, are they going to land on Raw? Are they going to land on SmackDown? I don't know. I'm so nervous for the Usos now. Oh, boy. We're going to get something with the Usos and Solo soon. I think that's going to be our next major plot point in the Bloodline arc. And, like, not to mention they've got Backlash. So I'm thinking... Kevin, Sammy, and Riddle, they're going to win the six-man tag match at Backlash, and then that's when Solo's going to strike. That's what I think so, anyway, because that's got to be a big plot point right there, and that sets things up for, like, possibly either Night of Champions coming up or for the next event, which will probably be Money in the Bank, potentially. I don't know. But I think that would be really interesting no matter what happens. Or just, you know, boots out the Usos out of the bloodline altogether, and the Usos end up on Monday Night Raw. But overall, but either way around, I mean, the match was fine, but, like, obviously nowhere near, like, the WrestleMania match that they had. Partly because I think this should not have been on SmackDown. I feel like they should have let this kind of simmer out a little longer, I think, and really make it either at Backlash or at Night of Champions. Just my thought. But, yeah, that and the commercials every five minutes, that didn't help its cause either. But it was still serviceable. It was fine. Nothing to really write home about, mainly because the commercials every five seconds kind of ruined the flow of it and that sort of thing. But the match itself was fine, but definitely not up to what I feel like, you know, it was building up to in terms of the excitement levels and all that. All right, so I've got some thoughts about this week's episode of SmackDown. So in terms of the matches, uh, the one match I would recommend from this week that y'all go and check out is definitely that first match that we had with Butch and LA Knight. The Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn versus the Usos WrestleMania rematch did not live up to the hype. I don't feel like it did anyway. And it's like, especially knowing that we still got another week of all this with the Usos and Kevin and Sammy and Riddle and Solo and sort of teasing that Solo should turn on the Usos and all that stuff or, you know, take care of the Usos, right? And just, you know, it's like it's prolonging the inevitable out to backlash, I think. And so I feel like it would have made more sense to have a lot of this all happen on backlash. Like we could have gotten a blow off to Solo and Riddle potentially at backlash. Like we could have had two separate matches. That's where I'm getting at. And then maybe have Solo like finish the job for Roman to like, you know, take care of the Usos or whatever. Right. And yeah, it might've been a little obvious, but it's like, at least it would have been a big moment on like a premium live event and stuff like that, you know, a bigger stage and everything. And it would have been memorable. But outside of that, the overall draft felt very disjointed and almost like, I get that we still have Monday Night Raw to get through, but did anybody kind of feel like it was kind of off balance a little bit? When you take a look at the two rosters as they sit right now, at least, you know, at the end of SmackDown with the first, you know, 16 picks in total it just feels so uneven and then speaking of uneven like in confusing what was the flow with the uh guest draft pick people like the hall of famers and stuff like that coming out to do the draft picks it was kind of a reminder that we really do need general managers back for like these little moments i think right it just makes more logical sense like when you 
get the draft and then it's like you know just for the week to week things like ooh this person you know interrupted a match like okay let's set up this match for next week or let's turn it into a tag team match you know whatever right stuff that's more on the fly and it's like where is Adam Pierce in this whole situation too like if he's the authority figure general manager figure type person for like both these shows it just felt so strange to me i don't know what else to label it as it's like i like seeing the hall of famers but it's like why are we using the hall of famers to announce draft picks when we could just have like adam pierce and like somebody else do it like and have an established general manager on each show i don't know that would feel like that would make a little bit more sense to me but at least we have the draft we have a new title for monday night raw which is all fun and exciting and yeah, not much else to really say about this other than the draft picks don't apparently kick in until May 8th. By the time that this is uploaded on Saturday, they'll have obviously, you know, announced who the rest of the Saturday morning picks are going to be for the first part of the draft and so forth. But let me know what y'all thought about this week's episode of SmackDown down below and the draft so far. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye.